boy, do I just love making videos about former Wisconsin Badgers. As Cole Caulfield and Alex Turcott, they have been the subject of many conversations here on the YouTube channel. However, when these guys were Wisconsin Badgers, there was another player that was also in the system at the same time who had himself a very good NHL prospect projection. Let's talk today about that missing piece, a guy who isn't a forward like Caulfield and Turcotte, but instead is a D-man, and my goodness, is he a demon of a D-man. He is so gosh darn good, and I feel like it's about time we actually gave him his praises. Let's go over to the Big Apple, Madison Square Garden, in New York City, and talk about one of their best young defensemen on the team, Keandre Miller. Yeah, isn't it kind of funny? We're talking about a Miller on the Rangers that doesn't start with a JT. Instead, we're talking about a KA. K. Andre Miller is a New York Rangers defenseman who has broken out in the best way possible this season. Initially drafted by the Rangers in the 2018 NHL entry draft, K. Andre Miller is a six foot five, 216 pound left-handed defenseman born in January of 2000. So he's a few months older than I am, actually. He's a big dude, and he was always touted as being a big dude, but also being a specimen of a human being. As in his draft season, the guy had 29 points in 58 games played for the NTDP. Now, that's not the most amazing stat line in the world, not gonna lie, but what you had with Miller was such raw potential that there's a reason why even though he was projected to go a lot later, he ended up going 22nd overall to the Rangers. He was a big guy with strength to go along with that size, not to mention an offensive touch, that was honestly quite underrated at the time. He also had the mobility and the eagerness that K. Andre Miller presented in his game. This is the scouting report from Aaron Vickers from Future Considerations back at the time. He's a bruising, defensive-minded defenseman who has solid mobility for his size. He doesn't have any issues getting up and down the ice when already moving, and he handles more agile attackers by being physical and using his length. He communicates well with teammates and plays responsibly in his own zone. Great awareness of his defensive zone and quick decision-making ability. Doesn't hesitate to shoot the puck when he has a lane, and his booming shot is his most dangerous offensive weapon. Has NHL middle pairing physical defensive defensemen written all over him? And the thing is, this scouting report was written up a year before Miller was drafted, so the offensive touch wasn't necessarily there yet, but as Miller went over to Wisconsin, he played a little bit over there, getting 22 points in 26 games played as a freshman, and an admittedly worse point per game year the year after that, Miller ended up refining his offensive game to the point that now with the New York Rangers, three years removed from being a Wisconsin Badger, the guy has 25 points in 45 games played. Five goals, 20 assists, he's on pace for 45 total points on the year. Now, at face value, that by itself is great progression. He went from 12 points as a rookie in 2020-2021 to 20 points in 82 games last year, and now he's got five more points in half the games played the season after that. However, this 25-point in 45-game marker is a lot more impressive when you acknowledge that in his last five games, Miller has two goals and four assists for six total points, and in his last 10 games, the guy has three goals, six assists for nine total points, too. He has been on an absolute hot streak, and if you take a look at this screenshot from the broadcast earlier yesterday, you can see that Keandre Miller is the third New York Rangers defenseman in the last 35 years with a seven-game point streak before turning 23. Against the Hurricanes, a goal and assist. Against the Canadians, an assist. Against the Devils, an assist. You can see it's all on there. And in this seven-game point streak, the guy has nine total points. He has really come into his own this season as a mobile, offensively-minded, defensively-capable defenseman. And it's crazy because when you talk about quote-unquote two-way guys, you sort of think guys that are the jack-of-all-trades, but they're not necessarily too amazing at one or the other. But for Miller, I feel like he's so good at both ends that you could label him as an offensively minded, offensive caliber defenseman, and that wouldn't be too inaccurate. You could also label him as a shutdown beast, and that wouldn't be inaccurate either. Some of the plays that this guy's making are absolutely incredible. You see the very late game-tying goal he had against the Dallas Stars the other night with .1 seconds to go or whatever it was, where his bomb of a shot is blocked point-blank and he follows up on the rebound, getting it by the goaltender. You could see in his own zone when he's chasing down Nick Suzuki who has a breakaway and he just very casually swats the puck away from Suzuki as if he's not talking to the Montreal Canadiens captain right there. He is so calm 
so poised, so athletic. And when it comes to this combination of size and skill and, dare I say, just speed, Keandre Miller is a completely different animal than what you have in a guy like Adam Fox, for example. Now, that's not to say that he's better than Fox. I do think that Fox has a more polished, refined, and higher caliber offensive game. But for Keandre Miller, I mean, the guy is already on pace for 45 points, and he's looking so good in the process. It's been decades, I think, since the Rangers have had two guys in Fox and Miller who are this good and that are this young in the process. In fact, let's go over onto the New York Post because Greg Joyce wrote an article earlier last week talking about Miller and his overall profile. This is what Adam Fox had to say about Kay Andre. The talent's there, and when he's playing with confidence, it's scary. He's a big, fast kid. I can't speak to that, but when he puts it all together like that, it's so fun to watch. So obviously, he's blossomed into a real good defenseman and a key contributor for us, like you've seen the past few games. But I don't think it's new to us either. We've seen it from last year to now. He's an important player for us, and the sky is the limit. This is what Keandre said himself about his offensive progression. It's been something I've been trying to implement in my game over the years. I know what kind of player I can be. I know I can produce and shut down at the same time. It's just a matter of believing in that and bringing that same attitude every game. Gerard Gallant said this, he has been outstanding. He played really well last year, and again, he's just taken another step. That's what he does for us. A great young kid, a great player, and he comes hard to play every night. The other parts of this article admittedly talk about the contract situation, because that is another argument that you have to bring up when talking about Miller and his future. The guy's making $925,000 in the last year of his ELC. It expires at the end of this season. So the guy is due for a raise. And when you talk about other players on the team, like Philip Cheadle, for example, and Alexi Lafreniere, who also need new contracts this offseason, it becomes a little interesting to talk about the $16 million of cap space the Rangers have, and you try to map out where that money is going to go. But one thing's for sure, when it comes to the caliber of talent and the showcase we have seen so far, I'm pretty confident in saying that Keandre Miller is probably going to get the biggest price tag amongst the group of three that we had just talked about, because quite frankly, the guy's logging over 20 minutes a night, he is scoring pretty much a point per game in his last week and a bit's worth of play, he's just been so dominant out there. And when it comes to what Miller was supposed to be after being drafted in the 22nd overall spot, this was the ceiling that the Rangers ended up seeing. Never mind the fact that other scouting outlets like ISS, for example, had him at number 32. Outlets like McKean's had him at number 14. Some were a lot higher on Miller because of this package of athleticism, size, and sheer overbearing power that Keandre Miller is showcasing right now as a member of the New York Rangers that I feel like for this team, seeing it pay off in the best way possible, this right here could be a pairing for the ages if Keandre Miller and Adam Fox somehow find themselves on the same line, let's say a few years down the line. Like, this could be really astronomically out of this world good, and I feel like both of these guys could potentially boast up like, consistent 60-65 point years if they play together and if they both max out to their primes. Obviously, Fox has done that before, but I feel like Keandre Miller, we're really on the cusp of seeing what he's capable of, and he's just going to get better as his years go on. So talk to the comments on your thoughts about Keandre Miller and the progression he has had so far. What are your thoughts on him and how he compares to Adam Fox? Do you think that Keandre Miller is going to get the highest price tag out of the three RFAs on the team right now? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about his development, his money, his play, and everything so far. I hope you enjoyed this video of Shrolls 99. And bye.